You probably use your computer every day without giving it a second thought. And you're probably used to your existing workflow, but there are lots of shortcuts that you could be making use of in order to get the most out of your time. Here are over 40 shortcuts you should be using in macOS. To start off with the most common shortcuts you're probably already familiar with, the copy and paste commands. Of course, command C will copy and command V will paste but you can also hit Command X to cut, so you can paste the text where you want it and the original text will be removed. Also, a better way to paste in many cases is with Command, Option, Shift, V. That pastes the original text, but drops any of the formatting, like the size, font, and color. This is really handy for copying text off a website or somewhere else where the text is really stylized to make sure it fits in wherever you paste it. Once you've used it a few times, this paste without formatting command is very likely to take the place of that standard paste command in most cases. Now what about navigation? If you're gonna open a new app, you might move your mouse up to the corner to click on that little magnifying glass, then start using the spotlight search. But a quicker way to do that is just click command space. That brings up the spotlight search so you can just start typing and you don't have to take your hands off the keyboard. Once you've opened up a few applications, switching through them is pretty easy. Just hit Command and then Tab, and a blurb will pop up with all your active applications. Keep holding the Command key and hit the Tab key again to cycle through them and select the one that you want to bring to the front of the screen. Once you have that application you want up front, if you have a ton of other windows in the background, you could go and manually minimize all of them, but it's far easier to just hit Option Command H. That hides every window other than the app up front. If you only want to close a few windows, rather than clicking that little yellow circle, you can just hit Command M to minimize the selected app to your dock. Speaking of the dock, sometimes it can just get in the way. So hitting Command Option D will hide or reveal the dock. Those are some of the navigation commands I use most often, but there are two more I find pretty helpful. If you hit Command Option Escape, macOS will open the force quit applications window. This can be incredibly handy if an app freezes or it's using too much of your system resources to get it closed so that you can keep using your computer. As a user of the Adobe suite, I used to use this pretty often, though thankfully I haven't had to nearly as much recently. Finally, to open an application settings, rather than clicking the app name in the top bar and then choosing settings, you can just hit command comma that will pull up the settings so you can make any changes you need. Now, let's talk about screenshots. There are a few different screenshot types on a Mac, but the simplest is just holding Shift, Command, 3. That will take a screenshot of your entire screen at one time. It will then pop into the bottom right corner of your screen, where you can click it to edit it, or you can just wait, and by default, it'll save to your desktop. If you only want to capture a portion of your screen, don't take a screenshot of your whole screen and crop it. Just press Shift Command 4. Then you can select the portion of the screen you want in the screenshot and it will save in that same way. Now, if you're trying to capture one entire window, there's an even easier way than trying to exactly select that window. Just add the spacebar to that last command. So Shift Command 4, then you hit the spacebar. Then you can click on the window you want to capture and it will be perfectly captured with just that window and nothing else on your screen. Now there is one more step you can add to that depending on the type of screenshot you're looking for. You'll notice that last screenshot has a translucent shadow around it. To get that screenshot without the shadow, you just hold Option while you're clicking to capture the screenshot. So Command Shift 4, then hit Space, then hold Option and select your window. Just like screenshots, the software for screen recording is built right into your Mac. So if you want to record video of what's on your screen, just hit Command Shift 5, and that'll bring up the screenshot tools. You can then select to either record just a portion of your screen or your entire screen. And once you click, it'll start recording. You can stop the recording with the stop button in the upper right corner of your screen. And while you're at it, if you don't like all your screenshots and screen recordings cluttering up your desktop, you can change where they save to. Just hit Command Shift 5 to bring up that menu. Then select Options, and at the top, you can choose where you want to save it. 
With those system-wide shortcuts out of the way, let's cover some important ones for specific apps, starting with Pages. You're probably already familiar with the basic formatting shortcuts, such as Command-B to bold text, Command-I to italicize text, and Command-U to underline text. You can also make use of a built-in dictionary by selecting a word and hitting Control-Command-D, and it'll pop up a window with a dictionary definition and synonyms. Pretty handy if you find yourself repeating the same words too often. And if you're repeating those words too often, just hit Command-F and type what you're looking for to find all instances of that word in the document. Once you've finished your writing, to go back through it and find misspelled words, you don't have to do that manually. Just hit Command semicolon. It will bring you to the first misspelled word in the document. Hitting Command semicolon again will move the selection to the next misspelled word, and so on, cycling through all the misspelled words. This one is handy in Pages, but also in other apps, as it brings up the Character Viewer where you can access all your emoji. When MacBooks lost the touch bar, it was the easy access to emoji that I missed most, but hitting Control, Command, Space brings up the character viewer so you can use your emoji to your heart's content. Now let's talk about Safari. With how much of the world is online nowadays, you probably spend most of your time in a web browser, so these shortcuts could save you a fair bit of time. First up, to open a new tab, Rather than clicking that plus button with your mouse, just press Command T. If you accidentally closed a tab and you want to reopen it, pressing Shift Command T will reopen the most recently closed tab. Similarly, if you closed a whole window with several tabs in it, pressing Shift Command T will reopen all of those previously closed tabs just how you had them. Once you're done on a web page and moving on to the next one, just press Command L and it'll automatically select the URL in the address bar so you can start typing your next URL or whatever your new search terms are. Within Safari, there are several options for navigating backwards and forwards through web pages. Of course, you have the arrows in the upper left corner. You can also just use Command and then the left arrow key to go back a page or the right arrow key to go forward a page. Even easier than that though, if you have a trackpad, you can just swipe to the right with two fingers to go back a page, or swipe to the left with two fingers to go forward a page. When you're opening a link, you can right click and choose Open Link in New Tab. But it's way easier to just hold Command and then click that link to open it in a new tab. And the last one for Safari specifically, just like in Pages, if you hit Command F, you can search the web page for a specific word or phrase really handy when looking for the context of a quote when doing research. Now on to Finder. It's where you access all your files, so you should know how to use it to its fullest extent. Just like in Pages and Safari, hitting Command F will open up a search panel, so you can start looking through your documents. You can also use the same copy and paste commands, so Command C and Command V. But if you want to move a file, rather than using the cut command, you add Option to the Paste command, so Command Option V. In that same realm, hitting Command D will create a duplicate of whatever file you have selected. Hitting the spacebar will open Quick Look, which, as the name implies, gives you a quick look at whatever file you have selected, and it's even faster to use than macOS's preview. To see more information on a specific file, of course you could right-click and select Get Info, or you can hit Command-I to pop out that info panel. When trying to delete a file, if you're used to a Windows machine, you might have tried just pressing the delete key to no avail. Instead, to delete a file, you have to hit Command-Delete. Or, of course, you can right-click and choose Move to Trash. Now, rather than interacting with files, there are a few commands within Finder to open specific locations that I find really helpful. Hitting Command-K will open up the connect to a new server prompt. If you have a network attached storage device on your local network that didn't pop up automatically, this is a simple way to get it connected. Otherwise, hitting shift command K will open up the network window where visible network devices will all show up. With the Apple ecosystem, you don't need to do network transfers though. So hitting shift command R will open up the airdrop window. So you can easily send files to other Macs iPhones, and iPads. Hitting Shift-Command-C will open the computer window, 
where you can see your main storage, any connected storage devices, and your network. And to get to a few more commonly used locations, hitting Shift-Command-D will open up your desktop, and Shift-Command-U will open the Utilities folder, where you can find a whole bunch of tools. One final shortcut you should know isn't application-specific. It's related to your computer's volume. Normally, you just press the volume keys up or down to change the volume to your liking, but what if you're wearing headphones or want some extra granular control over exactly how loud your sound is? Well, if you just hold the Option and Shift key and then hit the volume keys, you'll notice the bar moves in much smaller increments. This one isn't something I use all the time, but it does come in handy once in a while. Now, these are some of the shortcuts I find most useful, but there are way more out there I didn't cover, from system-wide shortcuts to other program-specific ones. If you have any favorite shortcuts that save you time, please feel free to share them. And if you're interested, I can make more in-depth videos of advanced tips and shortcuts for specific macOS applications. So let me know down in the comments. If this video helped you out, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more from 9to5Mac.